I will call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, please bless our elected officials. Grant them the wisdom to know and the courage to do what is right for all citizens. Amen. 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 Roll call, please. Allen. Here. Green. Here. LaFour. Here. Ms. Stravich. Here. Rindell. Here. Ricks. Here. Warren. Here. Good to see everybody here tonight. Approval of minutes for the City Council meeting of July 15th would be in order. I'll make the motion. Support. What's been made in support? Is there any discussion? Being not, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We also have the quarterly roundtable meeting minutes from July 22nd. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Support. Motion has been made in support. Is there any discussion on these minutes? Being not, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. So audience comments on any non-agenda items? If anybody would like to address the City Council, now would be the time. We ask that you step up and use the podium and state your name and address for the record. We'll move on. There will be time to speak during the agenda item. Okay, uh, adoption of agenda. Mr. City Manager, any changes? Uh, I just have uh, one change. We need to remove the closed session and the item under other business for the con contract. They haven't had a chance to vote on it yet. Okay. Okay, anything else from Council? Most to amend the agenda would be in order. I'll make the motion. Support. Motion to amend the agenda has been made in support. Any discussion? Being not, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. Motion been made in support. There's no discussion. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We move on to items for consideration. We have nine this evening. The first one is presentation of the Volunteer of the Year Award. Mr. City Manager. Council is scheduled to present the City of Richmond Volunteer of the Year Award to the recipient discussed at the quarterly roundtable meeting. The award is given in recognition or memory of uh, longtime Planning Commission member Doug Penzine. Thank you. <coughs> Council, if it's uh, your wishes, I'd like to present that at this point in time. Absolutely. Mr. Hable, would you step up to the podium, please? Why <laughs> John called me out? Snake in the grass. Yes. Uh, in 2016, former longtime plan commissioner member Doug Penzine passed away uh, at a young age. Um, two years ago, the city was contacted by his family who wanted to create a memorial award in Doug's memory. Uh, for those of us that knew Doug, choke a little bit. <clears throat> That's why you should have this. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with Doug, and, and you know, he just was, he was on planning commission for umpteen million years, volunteer fire department, uh, the wrestling program, uh, other programs at the school. Uh, especially some of the athletic programs. He was a big supporter, big supporter and member of the Sportsman's Club. Uh, good old days for many, many years and in many other organizations, Doug would always be there to help. And uh, we often joked that uh, if Doug was to bleed, he'd, he'd bleed Richmond blue. So uh, the City Council and Penzine family felt that creating a Richmond, uh, City of Richmond Volunteer of the Year Award would be given out annually uh, would be a fitting tribute to him and his legacy. In the council's discussions on who should be given the award in 2019, uh, immediately your name came up. Did, and so did, we, did John have a vote on that? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> uh, this year, the, of course, they've selected you, Tom, as the volunteer of the year. Uh, last year was the first year, and it was Dr. Patrick McClellan, especially after 50 years of serving on the planning commission. Um, it was uh, it was noted, and he and Doug worked very closely uh, in the plan commission. You worked with Doug on uh, Christmas decorations oh, yeah, every year, every year. Uh, for years and years. 
Um, but also, you've been a very active member of the Lions Club here in Richmond. And, um, you know, quite often we've seen, quite often I've missed you when you've been in the intersections and I steer your way, you always jump out of the way, but you've right. been out in the middle of the Main Street many, many times yeah. collecting money for Lions Club causes, which is, you know, outstanding. Uh, Longtime member of uh, REGS and uh, your wife Christine being uh, president there uh, for quite some time now. And she tells you when and what you need to do there. We all know that. I just but you're always off. out there doing something. Yep. Always out there doing something. So that's always appreciated. And uh, especially with the, uh, uh, the new barn. You've been over there. You've been working on that often last summer. Uh, when I was working over at Good Old Days, you were working on the barn all summer. And um, you came over and even helped us when you had the skid stir. So yeah. you're always there. Yeah. You're always there and we've always appreciated what it is you do. And of course, longtime Chamber of Commerce member and had a business for many, many years in Richmond, uh, Richmond Moore. So uh, you continue to provide strong leadership in your role on the uh, EDC here with the city of Richmond. Um, and uh, also you serve on the EDC's project cleanup committee that oversees the distribution of funds back to businesses working to maintain uh, improve uh, our downtown the buildings. You also serve on TIFA um, and have been a loudmouth. Oh no, it doesn't say loudmouth. It says somebody who's been in. For me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you've been there. You've been. You 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 are known to speak what you think, and that's good. That's what we need on our boards. Uh, and quite often we do agree with you. We hate to admit to it, but we do agree <laughs> with you. But you're thinking. You've been here all your life, and and you know what it you know, what we need here to make this a better community and we appreciate all that. Uh, and as I mentioned, of course, uh, still working on the Christmas decorations. Uh, basically, Tom, you spent a lifetime of doing what we need done in this community. And um, this is kind of like a, a, a lifetime award. Um, well, the other award you got was a lifetime award and that was uh, you and Christine when you were named the Grand Marshals for the parade. Uh, with a long list of people that you know made this community a great community. So anyhow, on behalf of the city council, and they still have to make the motion to pass all this, but uh, we wanted to surprise you with well, this. You did. And this is for you at home. And uh, I figured John was going to do something bad tonight. I no, <laughs> no, John didn't do that. <laughs> but this will stay here in City Hall, yeah. well, and it has you. your name on there for 2019. And again, thank, thank, thank you, you so much. much on behalf of the city council and the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. So, council feels that there cannot be any more comments during the rest of our meeting uh, by you since you've already been at the <laughs> microphone. So, we appreciate it. <laughs> I, I may make a comment here. I may have to leave because I do have a board of directors meeting that I'm supposed to be at at the historical. Well, that's why we picked tonight. We knew you would have to leave so you couldn't interrupt <laughs> <laughs> our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, moving on to item number two. Introduction of first reading of ordinance number 148-2 amendments to cross connections. Mr. City Manager. Council is scheduled to consider giving introduction and first reading to ordinance 148-2 amendments to the water and sewer ordinance. Uh, the city's current sewer or water and sewer ordinance was adopted in 2001. Since then, uh, there have been several changes, uh, most importantly, as far as some of the wording in the ordinance, the DEQ now, DEQ is now the uh, Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, or EGLE. And so uh, they were out here earlier this spring, uh, did a, a survey of our water and sewer system and recommended some changes to keep our ordinance in compliance with state law. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion before discussion? I'll make the motion to approve the introduction, first reading of ordinance 148-2 for the production of public water supply from cross connections. Support. What's my made and support? Is there any discussion on this? You would assume, I mean, what we had to add to this was that we can shut the water off if we know there's a cross connection that's not approved. Yeah. You would assume that that would have been, you know, the authority that we had to begin with. Yes. So we'll re redo the, uh, 
the paperwork here. But uh, I guess you have to have it in writing before you can do those type of things. So in other words, before we couldn't see a cross connection. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. We certainly yeah. would have that authority in an emergency. But this is this is based off of the DEQ or EGLE now certainly assist communities in making sure they have information out there to help them develop proper ordinances and this is a change since the last time this was updated that honestly probably was not in there at that time and, and Eagle now feels it's important to make it perfectly clear and I think that's all the intent behind that change is. but legal. it's significant and legal yeah yeah okay any other discussion mm -hmm. any audience comments on this item back to the table all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. against motion does pass Item number three is introduction and first reading of ordinance number 165, food truck ordinance. Mr. City Manager. Council is scheduled to consider giving introduction and first reading to ordinance 165, an ordinance regulating food trucks. Council discussed the food truck ordinance at the July quarterly roundtable meeting and provided direction to administration on developing the ordinance. Uh, I took all of the points uh, that council discussed and where I felt Council uh, had consensus in giving direction uh, and then took the ordinance that was uh, used by Grand Blank, the city of Grand Blank, and uh, put in the information uh, that council talked about at the quarterly. So uh, basically what's in front of you tonight is an ordinance for the city of Richmond, uh, but with um, several of the key items that council discussed during the quarterly roundtable. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion before discussion? I'll make motion to introduce and give first reading of Ordinance 165, an ordinance to permit and regulate mobile food vehicle vendors. Support? It's been made and support. Discussion? On the, um, the map that was supplied in the zones that we discussed, and I, I believe it was in the background brief, we talked about the city park area and that wasn't circled is that part of a zone or no John I didn't put that as part of a zone only because that's kind of the the public property would be on a case-by-case -case basis okay. done by the council itself okay but it says in the ordinance that public property case by case by council but with the preference being BB Park okay I, I just wanted to make yeah. sure um, the zones were more to kind of define where they can go on the private property right. perfect okay Anything else? I will reiterate my uh, dislike for the ordinance. Um, I still I, I see no reason uh, at this point in time after uh, we had workshop discussions, had more time to think about this. We have, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 to 17 restaurants in our town. Why do we need a food truck? I don't understand that. Um, I still don't understand it. They don't pay taxes. Um, they, I doubt very much that they would be hiring people like our restaurants do that uh, depend on those jobs uh, for a living. Um, they pay nothing towards city services but receive them all, police, EMS, fire, DPW, removal of snow if they're out there during the snow in April, um, and any other things that, uh, you know, where they may be that's on city property uh, be maintained by us and pay nothing towards that. Uh, they pay nothing towards uh, garbage collection, water and sewer fees. Um, they pay nothing, no property tax, nothing towards the operation of the city. And as small as we are, I don't like the idea that we're putting what I consider unfair competition for our established restaurants and food sources not just restaurants, but our party stores, our gas stations that have party stores that depend on some of that, those sales to keep their doors open. Um, I don't see the need. I still don't see it, and probably more so now than, than when we had our workshop and had the discussion. Um, so again, I will vote against uh, the first reading. Um, and would care for any more discussion at the table. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to. I will be voting no on this because I, on the other hand, believe it's too restrictive. Um, I believe that we're imposing a barrier between an innovative 
upstart business from competing against other businesses. I mean, we are, the, I, I don't believe the government should inf intervene in, in, in the economy and actually we should preserve the free market system and competition. Um, I teach my daughter that she can do anything she wants and that she can be creative and have make crafts and she can sell them at a craft thing. She can have a lemonade stand. I would never want government to impede on the free market system. Um, and we've never had an application. This is the first time. So I, I actually honestly don't believe we're going to have an influx of food trucks. It would be nice. Um, my neighbors support it. Um, they are very excited about a food truck. They believe that business would come to the downtown area. Um, that it would create an environment for people who don't normally stay. We're a bedroom community. They choose to go elsewhere for fun, exotic food, and usually that's what a food truck provides. So it's not usually directly providing competition to the restaurants. They have a completely different environment. A restaurant has air conditioning, seating, a lovely environment, and people go to those restaurants because they enjoy those amenities. People who go to food trucks like something quick, something different, um, and it, it's something that is drawing the millennials in. It's something that young families enjoy with their kids because it's hard to keep a kid at a restaurant. Um, so I believe this is too restrictive. Um, the public property I agree with here. I don't agree with um, limiting um, private property and limiting the time on private property and the zones. So there I will be voting no as well because I believe the ordinance is too restrictive. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I appreciate the work that we had in the last quarterly workshop. There was everything was brought out on the table, realizing that this is a what I'll call a uh, preliminary project to see how it goes. Um, I like the fact that we had the administration go back and pick zones for the different areas. I think we were in consensus that we wanted to stay away from the municipal parking lot, which is where originally on public property this was being proposed with the intention of, of steering somebody towards BB Street Park, which has does have some food there at the when the pool's open, but it's not actual other than candy bars and uh, convenient type food items. There's, there's nothing there. However, Little League does have something as well, has some food there. But I think we addressed being concerned about having it right downtown, which would infringe on zone number one as far as uh, restaurants that are established there. Um, if, if the food truck was able to work a deal out with the private property owner there, I think that's within their rights to do that. Um, so I'm still in favor of the motion of giving it a shot. And we always, have the, we always have the option of rescinding on it or changing it as we see fit. And as one of the comments that Councilor Green made, um, we haven't had an influx of people doing this, but who knows, maybe we will, and then it does become an, become an issue. So generally right now I'm in still in favor of giving it a try, seeing how it goes, and maybe we can find some, some food trucks from that area that's across from Old City Hall, which I think is perfect for this. And with uh, the indication we got from the administration is they would steer some of the people, the first ones, towards that location, if we can get something worked out with the property owner there or, um, or something. So. I guess I'm still, st I haven't seen anything overriding that would change my opinion on giving it a, giving it a shot. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm in favor of the motion for the back then. I, I totally appreciate and understand your points taken. And I'm, it's not that I'm for or against a food truck itself. I'm just for this motion that we now have something on the books after a lengthy discussion at um, our workshop where we didn't have nothing before and now we do have it on the books where we can have some regulation and understanding to make it fit for our community so I'm more for of just having the, a motion that's why I made it for an ordinance on our books where previously we had nothing 
if I may, to kind of piggyback off of what Rob just said, we put a lot of time into this. Um, I'm happy with the ordinance because we spent quite quite a bit of time at that last worksheet on just this matter in particular. Um, I know that there were some things that different people, um, there was you know some people that had different feelings on some of the issues regarding the ordinance, but we came to a consensus. And I think this offers um, a conservative approach, and it's a great way to get started. Okay. And I think it offers balance as well. Okay. Anything else from the table? Any audience comments? Maria. Please state your name and address, please. I'm Mary Maria Contutas from the Village Cafe, 68940 South Main Street, Richmond, Michigan. Would you pull the microphone towards you? Sure. Thank you. Better? That's better. Okay. So I just found out about the food trucks. As a restaurant owner and as a local business, I believe that the businesses should pay taxes and should be part of this community, do, do things for this community, where bringing an outside food truck, what are they gonna do, sell different kinds of food? Hurt a lot of the other businesses, especially when there's festivals. I can understand having food trucks on festival grounds, but on Main Street where we have 24 places to eat between fast food, we have pizzerias, we have family restaurants, bar restaurants. It is not fair to the local businesses that work hard. It's, it's not just the restaurants. The churches have uh, things going on. The party stores, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit much to have more food trucks. Um, I just really, as I feel like I've been part of this community for 30 years. Even though I actually do not live here, I do live here. My business is here. This is my life. And this town employs, between all the restaurants and fast food places, it employs 400 families. So I would really hope you would consider and support your local businesses instead of outside places that want to come in and not pay taxes and not do anything for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come. Is short enough for me? <laughs> Let me bring it down now. Hi, I'm Michelle Spencer. I live at 34670 Cedar Ridge here in Richmond. Um, I've been a resident for almost 13 years now and um, have children you know, in the city. And when I first heard of food trucks, I thought, well, that's cool and different and kind of modern. My kids have been to some in Traverse City and thinks it's pretty cool and it's a novelty. It's not meant to be, you know, a standalone restaurant. As Maria said, there's so many, you know, different food options and we have fast food and we have convenience stores and we have restaurants, but there's not kind of that middle ground, which I think a food truck is like a standalone kind of food establishment. So it's fast food, but it's home cooked. So it's kind of a different market of all of its own that I don't think would affect the big restaurants. It's not gonna stop me from going to Ken's Country Kitchen. It's not gonna stop me from going to Coney Island because God forbid my children go without Ted's Coney Island hot dog once a month. We're still gonna go there. But if I want some like new, different, and Hispanic food, correct? Yes, I, I might do that. I, I, I'm not gonna go you know, to Taco Bell for authentic, you know, Mexican food. But I also think it shortchanges a lot of the community, which is Hispanic. And it's kind of saying to them that, like, we don't value the things that you can provide for our community while we don't have anything like this in Richmond. And I think it's just a big chunk of the community that would support, you know, Maria and the idea of that. And um, I think a lot of people would enjoy it. And like I said, it doesn't have to be, you know, a permanent thing or anything like that but it's it's a novelty it's kind of cool like an ice cream truck <laughs> like I think about it that way you know kids eat ice cream all the time but man when it comes from a truck it's so much better so that's just kind of my thoughts on it I, I really don't think it will hurt any of our businesses as we frequent many 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 of them many times a month I think it would just be in addition to that and just you know for an example we drove home from our boat in New Baltimore last night and instead of stopping at a restaurant in New Baltimore I said no let's go back to town and eat somewhere in town and we were like, oh, Burger King, oh, 
Taco Bell. You know, like, Ugh, do we really want Coney? And like, we were kind of not tired of things, but something new would be nice. Like Burger King was new and novel for a while. And now it's like, okay, it's always there as a standby if you want it. But, um, you know, it was like that when Tim Hortons came. Like, everybody was at Tim Hortons that first month. And then it was just part of the property. So I think, you know, it's a step to, like, modernism. And like Jamie said, the millennials. These are kinds of things that are going to draw people into the community, you know, that, you know, Richmond is willing to try new, new and fun and fresh things. And I think without abandoning, you know, the awesome, you know, brick and mortar, you know, mom and pop restaurants and things like that. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, I'm Daryl Starr from Starcraft Brewery, and we come here in uh, awesome city, a lot of support. We appreciate it greatly. Um, our first order of business at our brewery is to, of course, sell the beer. That's what we're concerned about. We a lot of support from the um, area restaurants, which was great, and we support them wholeheartedly. Anytime somebody comes into our establishment for food, we direct them to Ken's Kitchen. They deliver, um, but part of our ambiance of our restaurant is something new all the time, different. Um, one of our uh, biggest, I mean, we've been in business a short time. Uh, we came out with a new lager. It was something different, something new. We're halfway through our inventory on it already because it was something new. Um, we t we've got a lot of people coming in and buying, spending a lot of money for a membership to our place. So one of the things we did, just to give you a background, is we tried to invite them in early to try the new release, and we supplied them with food. Uh, one of the things we want to do is supply them with different types of food. So I think the um, there's tons of breweries out there. We've been to a lot of them. They've had food trucks there because we can't make food. Um, that is something we'd be interested in in doing, and not something all the time where it would affect the neighboring restaurants. Because our local restaurants is what we want to support, local business. Um, but I think it would be something that would give us an additional something different sometimes. So to have that option, we would like to be able to do it in the future. You know, because there are options out there in food trucks that aren't readily available all the time in the restaurants that we can get. So we can cater them in, but our area, our, our, our restaurant is a small footprint, or our, our brewery, our tap room is a real small footprint. We don't have much room to set up food. So, I mean, I think it would be a, a good option for us to have something different once in a while. Not, not to supply our food all the time because that's not where we want to put our, our support into. But it would be something that we would want to be able to do. You know, we go, one of our problems is we plan on opening, staying open later on Sundays because we got a lot of people there and then they have to leave. They, we start out slow, we end up more people on Sundays. To help us out, we want to stay open later on Sundays. Well, Ken's Kitchen closes, so that's one of our options is gone. So just to keep that in mind. Thank you. Anybody else? Hello. My name is Maria Villanueva. I am 35390 Church Hill, and I am the person who applied for the food truck. We are the rolling cactus, and uh, we are here to say that um, by no means we want to affect any other businesses. We are, as we progress, we do want to employ people, and we do want to, if I understand that the rolling cactus or the food trucks do not pay taxes, but we will be doing donations. I, I'm a freaking volunteer at schools, at church, and at my boys organization so I do participate a lot in my city I've been living here for almost 10 years and uh, we've had options but we want to stay in Richmond we like Richmond we have a son who has special needs and he moves around in the city he rides a tricycle and I am confident that 
he can move and he can go on his own because this is a safe city for us. We do not want to do anything affect other, you know, other um, restaurants or other businesses. It's just that we're trying. We asked for a permit for a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and like he mentioned, that um, the restaurants closed early, so maybe people would have different options to visit us. And we offer authentic Mexican food that um, I understand because I love going out to eat in these areas. We are frequent visitors to restaurants, and we what we will have um, it's not offered. And I'm not saying they don't they do offer some um, Mexican food, but not what we are going to be offering. So we just want to say that, and we are ready to work, and we just don't want to make anybody feel less or that we're taking over something that we don't have. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Don? Tom Abel. I think you know the rest. Um, I just wanted to be open-minded about this whole conversation. This is all new to me as I hear it tonight. Uh, and I gotta put my EDC hat on. Uh, I'm here to promote the business within the city of Richmond. And uh, granted, this business is not gonna bring a tax base uh, to us like other business would and, and the investment that the other businesses have, but uh, I don't wanna be discriminated here either. And I'm not saying it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. And, and you're 100% right in saying all the above as far as employment, taxation, et cetera, uh, but, I, I, as an EDC individual, I think we should uh, really contemplate it and consider it. Uh, I think you don't, by me talking now, I don't think this resolution has to be made tonight. I, I believe I'm right in saying that. I think possibly we could table this and, and, and put it on a trial basis to see how it works out, to be fair on both sides here, and then make a, a decision down the road that may be more advantageous at that time. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay, back to the table. Any other comments? Yeah, I think the biggest thing we got to understand is what we're looking at tonight is not whether, we're, in a sense, we could be, but we are putting an ordinance in place that we never had before in such an event where if people would have come in before, we had no rules, regulations, anything on any food truck coming to this town because we had nothing. We put this together in previous meetings, and it's the first reading for an ordinance to put in place. Like I said, it's whether you're for or against food trucks, this is the rules that we're stating. They do come in town. These are the rules that the city wants you to follow. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're sitting up here wanting to argue whether he likes them or she doesn't like them or vice versa. This is the rules we want in place. They do come into town, and no different than any of our ordinance or rules or laws we have in this town that's what we're the the meat of this motion was tonight it was not for the promotion or lack of promotion for food trucks it was these are the rules in place that we have to put forth the problem with it is is that and i agree we had no ordinance and that was the first thing i said we have nothing to go by but just because we didn't have an ordinance doesn't mean that we have to allow it the majority on council wants to allow it, so you've developed an ordinance, and that's why there's conversation both ways right, on right. it. Right, right. Okay. Yes, we need an ordinance. I think we missed out. We should have been a little more proactive, and I think that should have been brought to us that these food vehicle, food trucks, whatever, are, are coming about, and we probably should have you know, had this conversation at least a year or two ago yeah. uh, so we could have looked at this. Um, you, know, you know how I feel otherwise, but I, I think yes we need to do this we need to have an ordinance to regulate this um and there's a few few things within the ordinance um i'm not clear on here uh, but i'll see the city manager since this is the first reading and we have at least two weeks before we have the second reading and whether or not council passes it um at that time into into law in the city of richmond but um i have some issues on Nonprofits, churches, and local under exemptions on the first page. I'm not quite sure how to read that, especially being one of the people that are in charge of the Good Old Days Festival and knowing how that works and how the rules are that we've always lived by. 
um, I need to sit down with uh, the city manager and find out exactly what's his interpretation of what's being said here. And uh, you know, we'll bring that back for conversation again. Um, I will not support it. I, I think it's totally unfair to those people that are here. Um, I haven't heard anything that's convinced me otherwise. Um, I just think that we need to support the businesses that are here first. And uh, if, <clears throat> if, you know, I think one of the things we forget is this is going to allow any type of food, not just uh, Mexican food. This is going to allow any kind of food to come in. So it can have a, an effect on a restaurant that's already here. So, you know, we got to think that way, um, not just what Maria, because I, I, I know you by Maria. Everybody talks very well of you, uh, both Marias that are here. But um, it, it's not just your truck. It's the next guy that can come in. Or another guy that wants to sell Mexican and sell the same thing that you want to sell. We need to protect that. That's what good old days has always done. We've never allowed duplication. It's called fairness. And I don't see where this ordinance protects. If there is going to be food trucks, I don't see where this ordinance protects that completely. And uh, so where Jamie feels that it's too restrictive, I feel that it's not restrictive enough. And of course, feel that it's not even necessary. Yes, John. Yeah. And just uh, as you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, uh, certainly we can discuss when the second reading and adoption will be scheduled for, but uh, certainly it wouldn't be any more than at, at the uh, August 19th meeting uh, would be the next potential. Um, and certainly I would encourage any council members that want to stop in, I can go over the ordinance as it exists tonight and kind of show you also you know some of the ordinances that I borrowed from and kind of as you mentioned my view of the language and what it means because uh, certainly as you well know any ordinance language can kind of have different interpretations so I'd be absolutely very very open to any of the council members stopping and going over that with yeah. me always have been John you've always had an open door anything else council okay uh, all in favor of the motion signified by saying aye Aye. Aye. Against? Nay. Nay. Two nays. Motion does pass. Okay. We go on to item number four, consideration of the purchase of pickup for the DPW. City Council is scheduled to consider the purchase of a pickup to replace the white uh, pickup that was primarily used by the Recreation Department uh, in the Fiscal year 2019-2020 budget, we included 30,000 uh, for the purchase of a half-ton standard duty pickup. Uh, again, I think approximately uh, two-thirds of that purchase price was coming from the rec department or the recreation fund, and a third of it was coming from the DPW equipment replacement fund. And Jim is here tonight if you have any questions. Thank you, sir. Jim, did you have anything you wanted to add to this? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay. Is there a motion? I make a motion to authorize the purchase of a 2020 GMC Sierra 1500 half ton pickup truck for Red, Red Holman GMC with expenses uh, $25,438.35 charged to the appropriate line item in the DPW Equipment Replacement Fund and Parks and Recreational Fund. Support. Most of them made and supported. Any discussion on this item? Yes, I'd just like to bring up uh, one item. I, I talked with Jim. Um, they have on here the power locks, windows, heated mirrors, keyless entry uh, for $1,169. Um, dealing with commercial vehicles and company vehicles on a daily basis, uh, we used to have just the manual windows and locks. Uh, we found it uh, to be cumbersome and hard to deal with over the years. And, and actually, the windows, the mechanical windows broke more often than the uh, electric windows did and plus for security you can lock the doors easier uh, it's just uh, I think it's a better use nowadays than not having it uh, I would recommend trying to add that on okay let's see 1169.35 yep okay I think for the the life that we had the vehicle uh, it's gonna be probably well over 10 years um, traditionally how long we keep the vehicles I don't think it's that much of an expense um, for the for the vehicle okay would you like to amend the motion Dennis? yeah I'd like to amend the motion uh, to add uh, the power locks the 
windows, heated mirrors, and keyless entry for $1,169.35. Uh, charge to the appropriate line items. Okay. Is there support on that? Support. Support? Must have made and supported. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, I would ask Jim, why didn't you include $1,169 or you have a personal reason not to have? Uh, well, it's certainly the vehicle's primary use is through parks. Unfortunately, the parks director isn't here to kind of weigh in on that as far as the budget, but budget certainly is a big part of that. We, um, our, our other vehicles at the DPW, <coughs> excuse me, do not have power windows. I, I believe this would include power locks because the, the, la the vehicle that we modeled this after, which is a DPW vehicle, does have power locks, but it does not have power windows or a keyless entry. As far as maybe that's power, powerless locks, but it does have uh, locks as far as the push button. So it's primarily budget. As far as the DPW use, I would say through the miracle of technology, I did text a couple of my guys while I was waiting here and two out of three said, no, we don't need it. One said, well, it'd be nice to have. So there's no consensus either way. Generally, I would say we, we don't have a need for that, but there are probably some times where there'd be a benefit. It, it's, I guess the short answer is it's budget related. So, and we certainly appreciate council looking out for city staff. That's great. You know, I appreciate that. But really be at council's opinion. If you feel it's worth the expense, we'd be happy to take that option. If not, I think we would make do without. Where is this vehicle parked? It'll be in the DPW yard. In the yard, not necessarily inside. Uh, well, the intent is uh, to try to find room inside the barn. If not now, certainly in the near future, but it's in the fenced in yard. In the fenced in yard. Yeah. I can see where the heated mirrors are uh, definitely something, and I'm sure that it comes with the Package. keyless entry and everything to get the, and the <coughs> heated mirrors. Uh, I, Personally, uh, working for the road commission when our trucks were parked outside before we got our new uh, center where we could park them inside, we had to wait, you know, mm -hmm. and you needed your mirrors driving those big trucks. Now, I know this isn't a big truck, but they still need their mirrors for what they get into uh, and try to get out of. And so I would support uh, that uh, addition. Mm -hmm. I did not consider that mirrors, I know you mentioned that's uh, an excellent point. And I still think even with that, you're 3500 under the budget, yeah. under the budget number we had proposed. Right. So, you know, we're still well guys. within. They come in pretty cheap. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other discussion on the amended motion? Any audience participation on this item? I use the, they can't hear you. Tom, they can't hear you at home. People complain when they can't hear. <laughs> We should just put a mic on you because. Was a <laughs> <laughs> Jim, what are you going to do with the old truck? What, what happens with that? Don't you trade that in, or you get uh, allowance for that, or not? We typically auction it off, and that would be the intent. Okay. No, sell it when you have your it. annual auction. Uh, uh, often with vehicles, we put them up. Okay. There's a, a bidding okay. website, electronic. It's website. a government website that we started. So using. you, so you per se, you can't trade it in on this new vehicle then at that time. I know very is, much these I guys would right. want this yeah. thing. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we probably couldn't it's drive it there. Normally on these things. <laughs> a lot of bits. white spray paint, Tom, holding it together. How much you wanted it, Tom? I mean, <laughs> I mean for $10,000, Tom, it can be yours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 9000 anybody else? <laughs> okay. Uh, back to the table. Any other discussion on the amended motion? Being that, all in favor of the amended motion? Say aye. 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 Against? Okay, we go to the Thank main you. motion, uh, which has now changed the numbers uh, to include the 1169.35. Is there any further discussion on the purchase of the half ton pickup? Any audience participation on this item? Back to the table. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Item number five is consideration of the purchase of a radar trailer. Mr. City Manager. City Council previously expressed an interest in purchasing a radar speed display sign. <clears throat> These signs can be an effective way of calming traffic by notifying them of the speed uh, they are traveling and uh, the posted speed limit. Uh, the Public Service Director and our Chief of Police uh, have researched uh, the radar trailers and have uh, put together the background brief in front of you. 
along with uh, the quotes that you see. Um, after reviewing them, uh, the administration's uh, recommendation is through the uh, RU2 system uh, with a couple added uh, options on it, which is um, a data package uh, that would collect data for us, uh, which uh, would be helpful in, on the law enforcement side of it. Certainly, you hope that with this trailer being moved around town, placed at several locations, people will get the hint that, hey, I'm going faster than, than the posted speed limit. Uh, but what this, uh, the, one of the options that we're recommending the data package is that uh, it will actually kind of collect data on how fast people were going at what time of day, number of times people, how many speeders you had, uh, that then can be used uh, for law enforcement purposes of where, do we, where are we needed uh, out there. Um, with the trailer mounted uh, versus some of the other options, uh, we felt the trailer could be moved around and, and kind of like selective enforcement uh, placed on you know, Pound Road or Ridge or South Forest, um, or depending on where our construction project is that season, you, you throw it out to the, um, uh, the area where the construction is going on uh, to remind people that, hey, we want you to slow down through the construction zones. Um, so I think the two department directors did a nice job putting this together, and our recommendation is for the RU2 system. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to authorize the expense of $7,575 for the purchase of the RU2 Fast 820 radar trailer from RU2 Systems Incorporated with expenses charged to the appropriate line item, Department of Public Works Equipment Acquisition. Support. What's been made and supported? Any discussion? This, of course, came out of a workshop meeting that we had in the past year uh, where we discussed the possibility of getting one of these. I'm glad to see it on the agenda tonight. And hopefully see it uh, out on our streets soon because it's only getting worse no matter what you do out there it just seems like they're getting worse the people just don't care you just we just redid Monroe Street goes by my house and I swear they've increased 10 to 15 miles an hour it's like a racetrack out there now on little Monroe Street it's insane uh, with all the kids that play on that street there's about 12 to 15 kids out there playing every day and they're just flying around that curve out there on just waiting to happen. I think something like this maybe clue some of those people in that they're just going too fast out here. And um, our police department can't be everywhere, even so many people think they should be. It's impossible. But I like the idea that it's collecting data. We had complaints on Pound Road a certain time of day. Yep. Uh, and when we can narrow that down, you, I'm assuming you're going to send a car out there at that time of day and Absolutely. maybe we can slow these people down once we get the data because some of our cars will sit out there all day and maybe see two cars but if we can kind of key in at key times and then we can kind of maximize our use of uh, the radar enforcement out there yeah. so. it's become too dangerous not to as far as i'm concerned uh, we've got to somehow slow these people down and make them aware that they're on a road <laughs> Right. Sometimes it's too much of this. And I concur because I think a lot of it is they're not, they don't realize how fast they're going, especially yeah. on Main Street too. They don't realize it drops and then they're not conscious and they just keep flying through at 50 and not realizing we have schools, we have people crossing, we have people shopping. And yeah, the point of this then is to also create awareness of your speed at certain places in the city. And I'm glad we got the larger display. There's a 12 inch and then the 18, the 18 inch you can see from a quarter mile away. So yeah. that'll get their attention a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah, well, it's excellent. Well, I wasn't so sure how effective this would actually be, but I think with this data package, that's where the tool really comes into play as opposed to people just <clears throat> drive by checking their speeds. If we can start hitting those areas with this data collection, I'm more for in favor of it now than I was before because of that option on there to read in the paperwork. Anything else? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. We, it was brought up a couple times about Pound Road as well. Mm -hmm. With Pound Road being so skinny, for lack of a better term, we'd probably have to put that on private property. Are we covered from an insurance standpoint if we get somebody that would put the sign on yes, private I mean, property? Yes, I mean, because even though it's on private, well, it'll probably still be within the road right of way. It may be on their driveway, but it'll be within the road right away, so we would still be covered. Yeah. Or 
pretty good. Yeah, feet, probably in the grass. Feet either yeah. either way, right? Yeah. Roughly hundred foot. Right. Yes. Right away on uh, most of our. Typically, actually sixty six feet, but there's still fifteen feet either side of the behind the curb. Typically, so okay. I would imagine a vehicle would okay. pull the trailer onto the grass behind the curb and and unload it there. Actually, anecdotally, the, there's a lot of residents up there, so you can park in my driveway anytime you okay. want. So, <laughs> yeah, so, I don't yeah. think that'll be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, questions? Any comments from the audience? Back to the table. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against. Motion does pass. We need to amend the budget for that increase. Is there a motion? I make a motion to amend the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget and increase the Department of Public Works equipment acquisition line item from $0 to $7,575. Support. Well, it's been made and support. Any discussion on that item? Just a question. I was surprised to see this because I thought we approved it in the budget. We approved, no, we, we had talked about it at a round table prior and then it didn't get put in the budget. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Any audience comments on this motion? Back to the table. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? This motion does pass. How soon before we see that out on our streets, Chief? Or? It, it depends on how quickly they, if they have them in stock and, yeah. uh, and uh, um, we can get them here. Um, also, uh, maybe we can go pick it up a little quicker than having them crated here. So if that's what in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought. Yeah, I, <laughs> I saw that. In Arizona. That's when I said that, I looked up. I'm like, oh, they're from yeah. like Mesa. Isn't there like fraud involved in that somehow? Or? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Moving on. Item number six in consideration of the purchase of a mower for the DPW, Mr. City Manager. The 2019-20 budget includes funds for the purchase of the zero-turn mower for the DPW. Uh, if approved, the new mower will be replaced the city's 2004 uh, Toro Z Master mower. Uh, this mower is usually used for well houses, lift stations, and the DPW yard and some of our smaller areas. Uh, again, we reviewed the bids uh, for the mowers, not on just only price, but also price, service, and durability of the mower. And our recommendation is for the Xmark Laser ZE series through Zimmers. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion before discussion? I make a motion to authorize $8,799 for the purchase of a 60-inch Easy X Mark Laser ZE series from Zimmer Sales and Service with the expense charge to the appropriate line item equipment acquisition DPW equipment replacement fund. Support. What's been made and support. Is there any discussion? Any audience comments? Back to the table. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Item number seven, consideration of designating an MML voting delegate and alternate voting delegate. Mr. City Manager. We have received notice from the Michigan Municipal League Annual Conference that, the, that their conference will be held in Detroit this year, uh, September 25th through the 27th, and they are asking for us to appoint a uh, delegate and an alternate. Last year we appointed Councillor Green as the delegate and Councillor Allen as the alternate. Thank you, sir. Uh, if Council would like to suspend the rules and talk about this before a motion, if that's okay. Yep. you have a consensus? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Is there anybody that would like to uh, cast the vote for us this year at the convention? I would be willing to, but it, that's the free portion, right? That's what I'm concerned. We don't have to pay to go to this, do we? Do we pay? I believe you do. Believe That's you what do. I thought. So do we have to pay to vote? You have to pay to attend the conference. Yes. Okay. That's a good question. Though. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'd be willing to vote, but I really, I looked at the conference again. I don't see too much that really we would glean a lot from mm -hmm. so I don't see justifying paying to go to the conference even though it's local and we can drive but it doesn't seem unless it, catch me if I'm please somebody tell me if I'm wrong if I missed something that we saw a value 
to attend. I don't know, Jimmy. I've never attended. Um, between you and uh, yeah. former Councilman um, Jeff Yarrick, uh, you guys went for years. Yeah, um, I mean, you do. You get the opportunity to take some additional courses. A lot of the new stuff they bring, maybe they don't have formal courses, but they'll have discussions with uh -huh. people. Yeah. So that's valuable. Then also, what I got a lot of value out was just finding out from other municipalities what they do, and he or even hearing the comments and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, you might not see something specifically on the agenda, but it's it's kind of what you make it out to be, you know. You interact with others. Yeah, and you get to meet MML staff. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you have some questions mm -hmm. about that and. If they get to know who you are, then they maybe aren't, they'd be willing to, I mean, they help us out regardless, but it's easy for them to place a name with a face in the community. It's showing some support for an organization that quite often some supports, you know, the communities in many different areas. Do we know how much, I mean, it's not any of the information that we have, but we do we know how much, uh, Registration is, is it under $200? A little more. Is it a little more than that? I thought it was a little more. Yeah. It's not in front of us, but yeah, it's no. usually. It depends if you register early, it's cheaper. Yeah. And again, I think as Mike has said, oftentimes part of it is the networking opportunity to see other council members, other uh, people that work within cities and talk. And so I think there's value in that. I also think appointing somebody as the delegate and the alternate, uh, it can always change, but it like at least show, as you mentioned, Tim, uh, the or Mr. Mayor, the uh, MML is always kind of there working on behalf of the cities, appointing somebody, we do at least have our rep in case some other meeting or something comes up, we have somebody that's appointed as our delegate. I think it's well worth the money that uh, we spend. I know we didn't go before because it was held in Mackinac or Traverse City and didn't appreciate the fact that we had to go all the way up there and the cost involved. But yeah, it's right here in Detroit. I think it's well worth having representation from the city of Richmond there. So, anyhow. Is there anybody that would like to um, be that representative to cast the vote on our behalf? If Can not, you get off work to do? I mean, I, I'm I'm free to do it. it. It seems like for full members, it's five hundred dollars a person to attend. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred. I'm registration rates. MML full and associate members. Four four nine four forty nine a person. Is that for one day? It's for three days, 25th, oh, 26th, and 27th. The, yeah. yep. And they don't give you a break on, they, on the days? I thought they did. They do, yeah. I don't know if it's that or the Capitol Conference. One of them, yeah, was like if you could only make it for one day. But if you have it there, then that's 500 is a little steep, I would say, for what it is. Uh, if you're going for three, yeah. Yeah. But, well, can we table this? Do we get more information on it? Uh, well, I would be happy to attend, but I think we just should discuss whether we, we should pay to go I mean the the early pay is till August 30th yeah so yeah. we would have time Pardon August me. 30th is the that price yeah. and it goes up um, after that okay so they could discuss it more before the next meeting I'd move to table yeah. to yeah, our next I meeting agree for more information is there support, support? I'm sorry yes yes, support. yes, yes. Support. it's been made and supported the table um, all in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. John, uh, hopefully we get more information. Yeah, on. we'll have everything on okay. cost and whether you have to sign up for three days or you can sign up for one and when are the most of the votes taken. Yeah. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Okay, item number eight, consideration of approving good old days resolutions. Council is scheduled to review the request from the Richmond Good Old Days Festival Committee for permission to conduct the 56th annual Richmond Girl Days Festival and the special events in conjunction with the festival. This year, the festival is scheduled for Thursday, September 5th through Sunday, September 8th. And you have roughly four motions uh, similar to the ones we've approved in the past. Okay, I would just like to, uh, we just have a little typo there. Um, on the parade request, resolution-12, uh, 
it, it says sixth annual good old days grand parade. It's the 56th, just a typo on the resolution itself. Yep. I okay. Found it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Do we have a motion? Is there a way to link all these as one big motion? If city council would like to do that, um, we we could. Is there anybody that uh, would rather go one by one? Maybe no. Put them all in one package. Okay. Then you, I would say a motion to uh, accept items number one, two, three, and four, resolutions 12, 13, 14, 15 of 2019 be approved. Support. Make the motion. I'll make the motion. He Support. Motion. Oh, he did? No, I just no. had a question. <laughs> I, I just oh, answered that, it. that was my I'll motion. I just answered <laughs> I made that motion. Oh, then I support it. <laughs> he supported it. My idea. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Converse, uh, any comments or uh, uh, discussion on any of those items? I think just so everybody knows, it's just, uh, it's just for the road closure for the parades and uh, fireworks and uh, those type of things and banners across the street. So it's uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah, nothing's ever changed from previous year's uh, request for the resolution. So that's why I thought as we could yeah. get it. If there's something new or something added, then obviously we would call it out. But there's nothing at all. There is one, Rob. The very first one under 2019-15, uh, use of the open city lot on North Main Street for the drum line. I'm requesting. We didn't put we um, didn't put that in there before. No, no, right here in the resolution itself. Yeah, but I mean, as far as our motion, we were stating on these four. Yeah, it's part of that. Yeah, but I'm saying it wasn't spelled out. That's all. Oh, I no, read it's not it in there. Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the only thing that's right, new. right. Um, and we have to contact the property owner next to the city's vacant piece of property yep. to try to get that in there. Okay, any other comments or discussion? Any audience participation on this item? Back to the table. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Good old days. Committee appreciates the city's support as usual. Only five weekends away. <clears throat> Number nine, consideration of board appointments. Mr. City Manager. There are two uh, board applications for council to consider tonight. Uh, one is from Alexander Stewart uh, for the library board, and the other is Dr. McClellan uh, for a reappointment to the Planning Commission. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion for the two-year term of the library board? I make a motion to appoint Alexander Stewart to the library board for a two-year term with an expiration date of June 30th, 2021. Support. What's been made and supported. Any discussion? Appreciate Alex stepping forward. I think he got his arm twisted a little bit. He's the uh, <laughs> minister over at Trinity Lutheran, so he doesn't have very far to walk to get to the library board <laughs> meetings. Um, but he is a, a strong supporter of the library from what I've been told. and. Um, our librarian uh, was the one that I talked to to see who she thought might step forward for us and fill fill that vacant spot. So I'm very happy that he has stepped forward to do that. Any other comments? Any audience participation on this item? Being not, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We also have the uh, uh, reappointment uh, of my uh, appointment of, uh, reappointment, I'm sorry, of Dr. Pat McClellan, uh, who we noted last year has served 50 years on our planning commission, and he has uh, come forward. I will tell you that he has questioned whether or not he should still be there, and I can't imagine anybody better to be on our planning commission. Um, working with him for the last almost 20 years has uh, been interesting, uh, and he, he runs a good ship. So I'm glad he came back for us. So is there a motion? I'd like to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Dr. Patrick K. McClellan for the Planning Commission for a three-year term with an expiration date of June 30th, 2022. Support. Motion been made and support. Is there any discussion on this? Any audience comments? Back to the table. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We move on to city manager's comments, sir. I have nothing tonight. Okay. Council's comments. Uh, Rob? 
Nothing also. John? Nothing tonight. Emily? Nothing, thank you. Jamie? I had one thing, but though Tom left, I just wanted to thank him because he's been a tremendous mentor to me throughout the years, especially on EDC, and encouraging me to even run for council. So if it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't be here, so. Very good. Dennis? Yeah. Michael? Just one thing, in your packet today, you did see that we got the city manager evaluation form. So fill that out, send, get it to me by the target is the next, before the next meeting or on the next meeting date. And then uh, I'll work with the team and we'll compile the results and take it from there. Very good. Um, city calendar, today being the 5th of August, we have a planning commission meeting on the 8th at seven o'clock right here. Um, the last summer concert, will be on the 15th, uh, summer concert uh, provided by um, Senior Helpers, and it will be the Sentimental Journey Band uh, over at the uh, BB Park at the Pavilion. And then I believe the last uh, swim also for the summer, it, yes, August 16th, it's the night swim from 7 to 10 p.m. at our pool. And two weeks from tonight will be the next regular city council meeting at 6 o'clock on the 19th, right here at City Hall. I don't believe there's anything else for our calendar. Everybody's getting ready to go back to school, and sports, high school sports will be starting soon, sooner than we care to. The summer's flying by. Taffel started tonight. Taffel did? Mm -hmm. Really? Jeez. Uh, softball just got over with last weekend. <laughs> so, okay, if there's nothing else, we move on. Uh, there, uh, the amended agenda, there is no closed session. Is there any other council comment? I'm sorry, any other business of the city council? Be not, a motion to adjourn would be in order. I make a motion to adjourn. Support. Motion made in support. There's no discussion. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Thanks for being with us tonight.